welcome to the angel's kingdom. Well, the first question about the monastery, it's in a, a canyon in rural Utah. So it's about two hours, uh, a little bit south and east of Salt Lake City. It's this beautiful canyon, you can see some of the uh, shots of it there, but most people like little nature scenes. But, um, and it is open. We, we basically have people that want to come for a visit. Um, and we have different ways that people can visit. Um, uh, one of the things that came to me was that um, I have been so generously hosted all over the world uh, for these last 20 years. And right now, I and my friends are being hosted by Sadari, not too far from here. And there's been such a warm, gracious welcome and hosting that um, there came a point this past year, this past summer, where we just decided to make like a little campground in the canyon. Uh, the monastery is like right up on the edge of the cliff. Uh, and then in the canyon below, uh, there's, we decided to make a little campground and, and have a little, uh, call it guest trailer. Because I felt, hey, I've been hosted by all these people. I want to host some people too. I want the thrill of hosting. So a lot of people that I meet around the world, we just are friends of mine, and I just had them uh, come over and we just host them for, for a visit. For those who want to come and really kind of practice the mind training, then there's ways to do that as well. Uh, coming to work for like a retreat, when there's a scheduled retreat, or coming to, to volunteer, to help out. And we have on the, that website, livingmiraclecenter.org, we, um, we have actually volunteer applications. So sometimes people volunteer, um, sometimes uh, there's, they can bring their services, they can bring their skills, abilities, help out in collaborative projects that we have going on at the monastery. Other people have financial needs, so they can, they can come for a period of time, but they can't really afford to, to make financial contributions. So they have a benevolent, uh, benevolence fund that we started to kind of help out with those situations. So, yeah, it's just really a matter of uh, filling out the forms. And then people have so many skills and abilities that were originally developed in the ego framework. I know myself, I picked up a few skills of, in 10 years of, of uh, university. And then when we give them to the spirit in more collaborative ways, there's like a synergy that occurs, you know, how what they say many hands make for light work, um, where things can, projects can proceed forward in, very, in a very flow and easy way. And then we will have uh, like sessions, we call them like a miracle moment session in the morning or lunchtime, uh, people talking, we call them expression sessions. Because people come from places where they're, they really find that it's not a habit to, to be so in touch with their emotions or to speak about their emotions. Uh, I always remember the uh, family therapist, uh, John Bradshaw, so you might remember John Bradshaw. He made a joke one time about his life growing up in his family with his parents. Because he used the phrase, grab it, there's a feeling loose in the living room. Uh, there's something about that phrase that I just like. Uh, you know, it was so kind of like, you can talk about the weather, you can talk about the news and the sports scores, but don't talk about the feelings, you know. It's too intimate because it could lead to friction, you know, and that, that's part of that people pleasing you were talking about where everyone's trying to smooth things over and never talk about any issues that could be highly charged. And with the monastery, it's, it's like there's an open welcome for that. And so that can be part of that breaking the cycle of the people pleasing to be able to openly talk about things that you're feeling. Because when you start talking about it, then you get more in touch with it. If you're just kind of distracting yourself with other things and kind of pushing them down, then those feelings never get addressed. And of course in miracles, of course, deals with the whole psyche. It deals with our perceptions, with our emotions, with our thoughts, our beliefs, and even our desire. And 
and our desires. It really deals with the whole package. To go for emotional healing, you have to go for spiritual healing as well. So, um, so people do come for stays anywhere from a couple days up to, usually up to six months is usually the maximum time. And then we do have residents uh, who live there, very much like uh, monasteries have monks and uh, convents have nuns, except we, we don't really get into all the vows and into uh, the rituals. Um, and, and so far it, it has continued like my whole life when I've traveled around the world on Divine Providence that it's worked out. Uh, so we're able to continue to have programs available and sometimes a weekend retreat or a week retreat. Uh, and then other times people just come and say, I'd like to stay a little bit longer. So there's all kinds of channels and avenues to do that.